with the clock winding down. Clay Thompson with the ball with the shot. And bang! And Chris Paul at the buzzer. No good. And we're going to overtime for a second game in a row in this series. And we'll give CP3 to King. Get it in. But they get it to Redick who gets absolutely stuck. Got some glory in overtime. Got some glory and we got the win. Yo, what is up, everybody? It's game four of what has been a very wild Western Conference Finals. Back-to-back -back overtime games. But at the end of the day, we won both those overtime games. And winning game one means we have a 3-0 series lead. As Iguodala hits the deck, Andre Iguodala is down. And he's not getting back up. He's down and he's starting to clutch his knee. He's down on the floor in pain. We have a 4-5 on defense here. Try to hold up that means somebody's open Middleton hits the shot but Iguodala is still on the other side of the court and now needs help from Tyson Thompson to get back up Iguodala to the bench and a big development in game four of the Western Conference Finals while it looks like we might be heading for a sweep here there might be some damage heading out of this series if we do win it because Iguodala is a key member to this team as we pull up the jump shot there so, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. <laughs> I'm just waiting to hear what the word is on Iggy's injury, but it did not look good on the court. And it's Harrison Barnes who came into the game to replace Iggy, takes the shot. All of a sudden, we see ruptured Achilles. Now, I'm surprised this is only a 2-4 to four week, um, week injury for a ruptured Achilles. As CP3 almost throws the turnover. I don't think he should have, but DeAndre Jordan somehow gets the ball anyways and gets the... Um, the bucket there as we don't get over Blake Griffin but uh man Iguodala out two to four weeks so basically what this means is he's pretty much out for the season even though it's only two to four weeks as DeAndre Jordan can get that wild shot to go there as we're looking on the break to Harrison Barnes who pulls up the three and gets it to go right there so I mean Iguodala doesn't provide a huge spark offensively he makes more of his more of his mark defensively any way he can or uh, <laughs> Clay Thompson knocks on the shot there so I mean it's not like Clay Thompson got injured that would be a big loss for us but uh, still, not good to see anybody get injured. The, the best part about the Iguodala injury, if there is a good part, is that we have a lot of depth at the small forward position. We have two people who could come into the starting lineup in Harrison Barnes and Draymond Green. And Green has been starting for quite a bit in these playoffs. So as Jamal Crawford pulls up this three in double coverage and gets it to go anyways, uh, I would suspect Jamal Crawford would start the next game because there's no way Iguodala is coming back for the next game as I pull up this random deep three over Blake Griffin and knock it down. So life after Iggy begins today. So part of life after Iggy is um, life permanently without Iggy. At the end of the season with the Warriors, um, I'm not sure if we'll stay on the Warriors next season. There's two scenarios we have as Steph Curry misses the shot here. It's either... I uh, stay on the Warriors next season because I have a two-year contract. I'm playing out year one here. Next season will be the final year of the contract. I either play out the contract on the Warriors, and what I would do is I would just pretty much sim to the playoffs and then try to play the playoffs and then go to a new team right after. Or I could just, you know, request a trade as soon as the next season starts. And it's going to be up to you guys what I do. So I'm going to leave a, a poll in the description that you guys can vote on. And also, I don't know if you guys want to see any um, live commentaries during the NBA Finals or if you guys want to just do post comms like this for the NBA Finals because um, I might change it up, do a little bit of live comms for the fun of it just because, you know, Finals, change it up uh, if you guys want, of course. So there will be another poll for that. So in the description will be two polls that uh, we'll love for you guys to vote whenever you can as we're trying to lock up CP3 on defense here. And unfortunately, he'll still knock down some of those shots but for the most part besides game two we've done a really good job on cp3 holding him in check usually chris paul is a guy that i can handle defensively it's not like lillard where lillard is just you know trouble all over the place chris paul is one of those dudes i can box up and then he throws those wild turnovers that help out the cause so you know that's good for us problem is though blake griffin is starting to get a touch in this series obviously game three he had like 36 points or something wild like that and this game is looking like it might be going to overtime as well because neither team can really pull away look like we had a pretty good first quarter but the clippers are back in and now it's a tie game danny tice top of the key thinking about pulling it up and eventually i'm like you know what might as well pull it up bang danny tice from downtown you're gonna give me that much space i'm not a I'm kind of reluctant on that three-point shot, but you give me that much space. Might as well pull it as you see Steph Curry in the lineup here again. Some more minutes with the Iguodala injury and Denny Tice knocking down the three-pointed out. It's a perfect release. That's back-to-back -back threes. Now 25 points for us. My teammates weren't exactly knocking down too many shots as we take it coast to coast and dunk it home. So I had to take a little bit of the scoring burden myself, at least until someone stepped up. Unfortunately, Steph Curry was not that guy. Steph was struggling mightily from downtown. And I was hoping Steph would be in the starting lineup if um, 
If Iguodala got injured, it would be Steph at shooting guard and Clay at um, small forward, but that's like a pipe dream as Denny Tice gets the steal and the slam off the inbound there to try to get it to Chris Paul. Instead, Denny Tice took it. Someone picked it up for me, and here we get another steal. We're all over the place pickpocketing everyone, especially CP3, who has nothing to do but foul Denny Tice. So we're in the fourth quarter here. Clippers are just trying to keep their season alive right now this could be the final quarter of the los angeles clippers season if they cannot turn it around right now harrison barnes knocking down the jump shot starting to get some support in this fourth quarter and that means we're going to be extending the lead it's in double digits right now down to 11 after the blake griffin jumper right there then blake griffin again on the slam he's starting to get a little bit of a feel but if we can just score enough buckets we can win this game the clippers aren't scoring at an astronomically high rate like they have been the past two games so we don't got to push it offensively, but obviously we got to keep our foot on the gas pedal because we cannot sleep on these guys. As we're actually closing the game with Steph Curry at small forward. Not sure how in the hell that works, but we got Clay at shooting guard and then Steph at small forward. And Steph somehow blows the layup here. Steph was having a rough game offensively, but he was doing the job for the most part as CP3 throws up the lob to DeAndre Jordan Lee down to 11. But the clock is ticking on the Clippers season as Steph Curry stuffs Middleton, meets him one on one top of the summit, and Steph knocks down the jump shot after stuffing Middleton. Kip, I mean. Can we start step at small forward? It looks like he's doing a pretty de decent job of that. So, um, and the result here is we are going to be sweeping the Los Angeles Clippers despite Chris Paul's best attempt to try to flop and help his team out. We were just too good. We knocked down the three here and we're going to win the series. So, hope you guys leave a like on this video if you enjoyed this game as we pull up a deep three and actually knock it down at the buzzer. Subscribe for more NBA 2K15 micro games and I'll catch you guys for game one of the NBA finals where we will be going against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Asterisk mark though, without LeBron James who is out for the season with some ankle injury. So it's going to be Warriors versus Cavs, just like real life, but with no LeBron and with Denny Tice. So we'll see how that goes. I'll catch you guys for game one.